Hi, Paraton Weather Meteorologist. Paul Dorian here on Friday morning, July 16th. Another hot and humid day coming to the Mid-Atlantic region, much of the northeastern part of the nation. And the overall wet weather pattern for the eastern part of the nation will continue over the next several days. There's even been some uh, significant rainfall out across parts of the southwestern U.S. Kind of a monsoonal flow of air this time of the year can set up with a uh, kind of a thermal low uh, over the land mass of the western U.S. and uh, air flows towards low pressure and in this case with the monsoonal flow this time of the year and especially later on in the summer months you can get more moisture coming in from the south and the east into the southwestern U.S. leading to some rainfall. It looks like that kind of a pattern will continue for the next few days. This is a forecast map by NOAA of total precipitation amounts for the next three days. I think we're uh, uh, going to have a heavy rain event for much of the eastern U.S. over the upcoming weekend. We'll focus in on that over the next few minutes with a stalled out frontal boundary zone. But first of all, this is again between this morning, Friday morning, and Monday morning. Notice this like, stripe of significant rainfall right in this part of uh, the southwestern U.S. And again, this is kind of a monsoonal flow. You, you tend to get a thermal low forming this part of the nation later July, August, and winds flow towards low pressure. And in this case, it uh, is uh, what really happens with a monsoonal type of pattern. Monsoon refers technically to a seasonal wind. And this is what happens over India, for example. You get low pressure over land and then winds uh, flow towards that low pressure from more moist oceanic surfaces or in, in this case from the south and the east pushing moisture into the southwest U.S. That will continue over the next few days. But look at all this rain here in the eastern U.S. And again we have a very slow moving frontal system that will tend to move in this fashion over the next 24 hours and then pretty much stall out right along the I-95 corridor. Low pressure will form right along that frontal boundary zone, leading to the chance of heavy rain later tomorrow, tomorrow night in the area from D.C. to Philadelphia to New York City, Boston, maybe some strong, too severe thunderstorms as well. Since I expect that front to stall out, the threat for showers and thunderstorms likely to continue on Sunday, especially along the East Coast, uh, with, again, additional chances for showers and thunderstorms. So a lot of rainfall over the next 24, 48, 72 hours in much of the eastern half of the nation. Heartland gets some rainfall as well, and a continuing monsoonal flow of air will produce some decent rainfall out in the southwestern states. Well, let's take a look at the radar uh, loop right now from WSI's IntelliCast.com uh, uh, to see what is falling right now as we speak. There's some decent rainfall out across the southwestern part of the nation, including the southeastern part of Cal Colorado and western Arizona, especially up in those higher terrain parts of Arizona, for example. Some uh, flash flooding type rainfall taking place right now and again. The heartland gets some decent rain today and all the way throughout the eastern third of the nation some showers and thunderstorms already in existence early this morning across the Ohio Valley. Primarily a rain-free day in the I-95 Carter region from D.C. to Philadelphia to New York City. Hot, humid, plenty of sunshine, high temperatures in the 90s this afternoon. Certainly can be some scattered uh, late day and evening showers and thunderstorms in the I-95 corridor region, but a much better chance coming over the upcoming weekend. Again, heavy rain, strong th storms, a threat in that I-95 corridor region uh, uh, from Saturday p.m. hours into the day on Sunday, and perhaps even into the day on Monday. Well, let's take a look at last, last night's 6 Z run of the NAM model. I think the NAM model actually has a little better handle on the situation developing for the eastern U.S. over the upcoming weekend in terms of the frontal system. I think the front does stall out right along the I-95 corridor region and hangs around all the way through the day on Sunday uh, along the eastern seaboard. The GFS typically is a little bit too progressive, a little bit too quick with the move movement of frontal systems, so it clears it out 
on uh, Sunday in the uh, uh, eastern seaboard region. It pushes that front off the east coast. I think that is probably not going to happen. We'll take a look at the NAM model here coming up. This is Friday morning looking at the 500 millibar field, specifically areas of spin in the upper part of the atmosphere that we call vorticity. Here's an area right here, right across the middle part of the nation as we begin the day. And watch what happens as we go into the upcoming week. And we're just walking through uh, in hourly increments here. Now this is this evening, again, primarily a rain-free day in, in the I-95 corridor region. Uh, it's scattered late day and evening thunderstorms on the table, but nothing too widespread. And here's that upper level trough by this evening over the Midwest, lots of ridging out in the uh, Four Corners region, but with that low level flow of air coming out of the south and the east, you get enough moisture to kick off some rainfall out in the southwestern states. And now we get into the day on Saturday, Saturday morning, and here is one of the main culprits right here uh, for uh, the, the possibility of some heavy rain, strong storms along the I-95 Carter region late tomorrow into tomorrow night. Let's keep moving forward from Saturday morning into the afternoon hours. And here we go. This is that upper level feature here that will help to set off uh, some of those strong storms that I expect to see late tomorrow, tomorrow night in the eastern part of the nation, especially right along the I-95 Carter region. So there's uh, not only very hot and humid air mass in place, but there's uh, certainly some um, upward motion that will develop over the upcoming week and as a result of this upper level feature here uh, pushing into the eastern states over the weekend. And here we go now into the day on Sunday. Look at that, a little upper level low still situated over the eastern Great Lakes. General troughiness remains. And again, I think the NAM has a better handle on this situation. The fact that I believe the front will slow down and grind to a halt right near the I-95 Carter region, the eastern coastline, uh, and, and still cause some problems on Sunday. Here we go, all the way into a Monday morning, right here, still an upper level trough, and indeed that threat for showers and thunderstorms could remain into Monday along the east coast. Still high pressure ridging out across the uh, Rocky Mountains with some hot weather out there. Well, how does this translate to rainfall down at the surface level? Let's look at the surface reflectivity forecast maps, again from the NAM model, uh, for the next few days. Here we are starting off the day here on Friday with dry, rain-free conditions in uh, much of the eastern part of the nation. And again, it should remain rain-free for uh, the, uh, much of the day in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. By the time we get to uh, this evening, right here, an evening forecast map, Isolated showers and thunderstorms in the I-95 Carter region could remain completely rain-free right through the evening hours in places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. A more organized uh, event out across the Ohio Valley as of this evening. And notice again some uh, pop-up showers and thunderstorms out across the uh, southwestern states. Here's kind of a thermal low I was referring to. And again, with this kind of a thermal low, you have... Uh, air flows towards low pressure, so air is kind of coming in this fashion towards this thermal low, which is uh, not too uncommon at this time of the year in this part of the nation. Again, that monsoonal flow uh, producing some showers and thunderstorms out across the southwestern states. So let's now move into the day on Saturday. And here we go on Saturday morning's forecast map right here. We have uh, showers and thunderstorms already showing up on the maps early tomorrow morning. And watch what happens. Uh, notice right here kind of a, a kinkiness in the isobar pattern. That is a trough that is forming here. A frontal system or a trough right in this region right here uh, inching its way into the I-95 corridor region. And that is the culprit for what I believe will be a pattern of heavy uh, rain and strong storms by late tomorrow. And here we go, low pressure forming right along that frontal boundary zone that is stalling out late tomorrow into tomorrow night. And here's some uh, 
uh, some heavy rainfall showing up here associated with this low pressure that again forms along that stalled out frontal boundary zone. This threat of heavy rain will probably extend all the way down through the I-95 Florida region into the Carolinas again late tomorrow uh, and tomorrow night. And then as we go into the day on Sunday, notice low pressure hanging around the eastern seaboard and we can still see this kind of kinkiness in the isobar pattern. In other words, there's still a front sitting right in this position according to this particular model, which I tend to agree with. The GFS has that front moving off the eastern seaboard uh, by Sunday morning, Sunday midday, and I think it's a little bit too progressive. So with that front still hanging around, there certainly will be the chance of more showers and thunderstorms, perhaps limited to the I-95 car region and points to the east, but still, nonetheless, a threat along the eastern seaboard uh, is on the table for Sunday uh, with that stalled out frontal uh, boundary zone. So again, watch out for some heavy rain, strong storms in the I-95 car region, much of the eastern third of the nation uh, during the upcoming weekend, all due to a uh, very slow moving, if not a, what will become a stationary frontal system uh, during the, the weekend. Meanwhile, out in the southwestern states, watch out for some more significant rainfall as this kind of monsoonal pattern continues for the next few days. That's it for now. For ParatonWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.